Think of an aspect of your life that dictates the limits of your freedom. Government and law enforcement, insurance and pharmaceutical companies, taxes, building permits, driver's licenses and more. There are hundreds if not thousands of stipulations, regulations and boundaries on our freedom. And out of the ones that were just mentioned, how many have you researched to find out whether they apply to you or not? Let's look at the forms of law that we currently acquiesce to. A common misconception among people is that any rule or regulation that governs them falls under one category, law. But there are many other forms of law that people abide by without realizing that they simply do not apply to them. Another misconception is that a nation's constitution gives us our rights. A constitution does nothing more than list the rights that we already have. We are born with inalienable rights, endowed to us by our Creator. They are not given to us and they cannot be given away. The most a person can do with a right is choose whether to exercise it or not. Maritime Admiralty Law is what's known as the Law of the Water. It is superseded by civil law and only applies to those who willingly contract themselves into it. The definition of admiralty law is a body of private international law governing the relationships between private entities which operate vessels on the oceans. Let's look at how and why a form of law that is fashioned to govern corporations, businesses and vessels has imposed its rule over natural human beings. This is all done through a form of word magic. A simple perversion of language has made it possible to convince people around the world that these alternative laws apply to them. One of the predominant beliefs in modern culture is that licenses, permits, registrations and other forms of documentation are required to operate motor vehicles, use public roads, build structures and establishments, engage in free enterprise and much more. Sadly these beliefs are based on little to no investigation whatsoever and are false. This belief structure is perpetuated by maritime admiralty law. This form of law was originally created to govern ships docking in foreign nations for the import or export of products and resources. It deals with banking and merchant affairs, not civil affairs. When a product is taken off of a ship and brought into a foreign land, that nation takes custody of the resource and accounts for it with a certificate. That certificate marks the birth date of that product in the custody of the respective nation. Think of why it is supposedly required to have a certificate of live birth in the first place. The Barron's Dictionary of Banking Terms defines a certificate as a paper establishing an ownership claim. So right there, we notice that everyone with a birth certificate is defined as being owned. People are used as collateral with other nations because the U.S. is bankrupt. The United States declared bankruptcy on March 9th of 1933. At this point, the U.S. began taking out loans from a private, non-government affiliated corporation called the Federal Reserve. With no money to pay back the loans, the United States began using the citizens as collateral. All birth and marriage certificates are literally warehouse receipts. Just look at the similarities of warehouse receipts and birth certificates. Both document the date of issue, a serial number, registration number or receipt number, a description of the product, and an authorized informant to notify the appropriate government agency. With all of this information being readily available, the majority of people are unaware of their involvement with maritime admiralty law. This is possible through the manipulation of language. This admiralty law changed the meaning of the word person from a natural living person to a corporation. Driver's licenses, vehicle registrations, auto insurance forms, building permits, gun permits, work permits, tax filing documents, birth and death certificates, traffic citations, and many other forms of documentation that were once believed to be absolutely necessary only apply to persons or corporations. Upon signing such a legal document, upon signing such a legal document, 
you are indirectly waiving your rights under the Constitution and lowering your status to that of a corporation that is created with the same exact name as you. The only way to reconcile your true name from the name of the corporation is to take notice that the corporation has its name in all capital letters. This is known as Capitus Diminutia Maxima. You may take notice that your driver's license, birth certificate, social security card, insurance cards, and more use all capital letters to legally represent the corporation with your name, not you. The corporation is known as an artificial person, whereas you, the human being, are known as a natural person. This deception goes even deeper when it comes to the courts that we attend. When showing up to court, you will notice that there are seats for witnesses behind a wooden fence or barrier. The defendant must cross through the entrance to the other side of the barrier where the plaintiff and judge sit. This act symbolizes the boarding of a ship. At this time, business can be conducted in maritime admiralty law. The judge, acting as captain or banker, is responsible for settling the balance between the two sides. This is why there is always a monetary value involved in any court case. The captain is simply dealing with banking and merchant disputes. Once the balance is paid, the case is closed. To turn the court case away from admiralty law where your rights are not protected, you must avoid agreeing to represent the artificial person. This is done by stating that you are the natural person. You don't have a first or last name because those imply corporate title. In a court case, you may state that the court takes judicial notice of your honor's oath of office. Every judge must take an oath of office to practice law, yet you must make it clear to the court and the jury that the judge is acting as judge and not banker. Remember that you are a natural human being of the earth. You are not governed by anything but your own consciousness. Laws are created within a society. The society that created the laws we see being enforced today is called the Law Society. Yet the most beautiful part of this entire deception is the fact that we are not part of the Law Society, so their laws do not apply to us. Judges, lawyers, and law enforcement officers, they're all part of a society. Within that society, they've created their own language that's deceptively similar to English. They have these little things called statutes, acts, and regulations that seem like laws but they really only apply to those within their society. So that basically means all the traffic violations, minimum age requirements, and everything except for damage to another person or their property doesn't really apply to the natural person. Laws only apply to those within the law society. The game being played is an illusion. You can simply choose to open your eyes and reclaim the freedom that you were born with bound by nothing but the limits of your imagination. These are just a few examples of assuring that your rights are being protected. By far, the most important line of defense against this deception is to be aware of the perversion of language and be absolutely aware of how you form your beliefs and concepts. In all forms of the perversion of language, there is a mirror reflection of this in the microcosm of the psyche. And the problem I see with humanity today is we don't truly know ourselves anymore. We have the 9 to 5 job, we have the house, the children, the bills, the television, the hobbies, and the errands that we run every single day, and we eventually begin to believe that this is who we are. You know, but who are we beneath the job title, beneath the status of mother or father, theist or atheist, Republican or Democrat, black or white, man or woman, who are we? Who are we deep down inside? We don't know because every time we hear an answer that we don't want to accept about ourselves, we deny it. We'll pass it off and project it onto somebody else and judge them for it. This is repression. And we see what repression is do to us on an individual level, but what about on a collective level of humanity? What happens when the whole world refuses to see what they truly are on the inside?